It's Christine Gritman here with Social, uh, this, this live show that I do every single Friday at 12 noon Eastern time, which is what it is right now. <laughs> and I'm quickly sharing this to a couple places right now. And today I'm very excited because today my guest is a wonderful friend of mine from right here in Nyack, Katie Marchese, Hello. who is the, the marketing magician. <laughs> <laughs> behind her husband Mario the maker magician yes. um, and she has actually been on the show before those of you who were watching back in May 2017 she's my most watched ever episode it's crazy it's crazy guys we, we have hang- to beat the numbers come yes, on yes we're hanging out in the little blue bus which you have a button yes. of right here the little blue Volkswagen nice. bus that they have <laughs> uh, that they transport their magical family around in and um, so this time we're gonna be a bit more targeted Hey, Robert. Hey, Tim. We're going to be a little more targeted than we were last time and a little shorter. Um, last time, they, I encourage you to go back and watch. I shared it a lot today, that old one yeah, that talked fun. a lot about branding and visual branding and uh, c- getting a community it, on social media. But this time, we are actually going to be talking specifically about how to get butts in seats. Yes. How do you get people to show up in real life to your events? Because it's one mm-hmm. thing to have raving fans online, right? right? But right. You know, ultimately, you want people to show up if you're doing events. Um, Absolutely. And she, I, I will mention sooner rather than later that she is actually doing a course, which she has um, done before, right? This is your second Once time? Once before. It's our second time running. It's starting February 28th. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's really focusing on performers and creatives and how to market yourself, especially using social media, um, which is sits at your fingertips. It's cheap and free. And, you know, there's so much you can do with it. And a lot of people are just not tapping into it the way that they could be. So that's what I'm there to help with. Awesome sauce. Yeah. And she is right here today to talk to us about, again, how to get those butts in seats. That's right. So um, first, of, first and foremost, like, how did you sort of figure out how to get people how, to work. Yeah, how to, how to draw. I mean, did you have a big audience first or? No, I mean, but we, so Mario and I, the little background is we started this 13 years ago full time as That's a magic amazing. company and we really just built it up from scratch. And at that point, we weren't doing a lot of public events. So um, I didn't have to learn There's that. More like aspect. private birthday parties. Birthday and stuff. parties, private events. Um, you know, every once in a while there'd be a public thing, but the pressure was not on me to sell the ticket. So yeah. I didn't have to think about that. But fast forward a little while and now we're doing a ton of public events and we're producing our own shows Uh, so magic performances for family audiences and um, a lot of them are here in our local community in the New York City and Nyack and Rockland and Westchester area but then we also have been touring the past few years so we're going to brand new markets and places where people have never heard of Mario and it's a whole new challenge of how to get people to buy tickets to something that they have never heard of before so um, I've just been learning from doing it Yep. And uh, which is the best way. It's the only way I learn. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited to kind of share what I've learned with that. And yeah, Facebook events, guys. Yes, just- I was about to. That, that brings to my next question, which was what tends to be the best platform for you in terms of getting butts and seats? So it is Facebook. Facebook events. right now. And like I say all the time with social media, as you guys know, it changes so often that you really you can't put all your eggs in one basket. And you need to know that this one particular tool could completely change. Yes. So yes, work hard at it for now, but be flexible. If you're not getting the results in, in a year or two years, they may have changed algorithms like they often do, and you're going to have to refocus. But for now, um, I use Facebook events all the time. And a lot of people, I think when they put up a Facebook, Facebook event, they leave it there and yeah. expect it to do its work. It doesn't. Um, just like with everything, you have to you know market that. So Mm -hmm. um, ads with Facebook events are really important. Um, And what objective do you use? Do you use that objective of specifically uh, getting event RSVPs or do you use a different objective? We do both. Mm -hmm. And so if I have enough time leading up to an event, if I post an event, say, three months before the actual date, I'm going to try to get as many RSVPs as I can in the beginning. So I'll put an ad on there that kind of slowly trickles in RSVPs. And all the while, I'm going to be interacting with those people. That is smart. That is yeah, key. It's there. You're gathering Interaction. A group of people. And then you. it doesn't have to be directly posts in the event saying, buy tickets, don't forget to buy tickets. Mm-hmm. But what we often do, especially when we're going to a new place, is I'll ask them, what are your favorite family-friendly restaurants in the area? Like, oh, I love that. Just get them engaged, you know, mm-hmm. and in Invest in what you're doing and who you are. And that makes them want to feel like yourselves. they're welcoming you yes. to their market. That's fantastic. Yeah, and that that 
question right there, like what are your favorite places to eat? Mm -hmm. That gets so many responses and it's so good because then I get to go <laughs> taste all these awesome things. But, oh, that's um, perfect. Yeah. So it, you know, it's a great thing. It works for everybody and it just keeps your people interacting and remembering that this event is happening. Um, for what we do, we, we work with family audiences and oftentimes with kid audiences, people do not buy their tickets way in advance. Yeah because they don't know what is going to be happening Kids that are week. are unpredictable. Katie um, is also a mother of yes. two. <laughs> <laughs> so I gather those RSVPs and I don't put my ad to sell tickets, the mm -hmm. other objective, until like maybe two, three weeks before the actual event is happening. And that's when I do an ad that's targeted specifically to get people to click the get tickets link. Yeah. And then um, that's when you see your tickets uh, really start to come in. But it's often from that group that you've gathered and have been interacting with over the past couple of months. That's great. Yes. Do you use the in. Pixel to track that? I do. Yeah, we use Pixel on our website, which is, um, you know, we did it for a long time without Pixel. I had no idea what that was until maybe a year, a mm -hmm. year and a half ago. Ago, yeah, so. the Facebook pixel confuses a lot of people. Yeah. They're like, what, what's what's this pixel? Is it gonna like <laughs> make a part of my my screen look weird? But it's just code you put into the back back end of your website so that Facebook can track, you know, who comes to you from Facebook, what do they do when they there when they're there. Also, mm -hmm. even if they didn't find you through Facebook, someone who's on your website. Facebook, if your pixel's there, knows who they are on Facebook and you can advertise yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. I mean, it's yeah, basically it's a creepy, way to great. gather people. If anyone has visited your website, you mm -hmm. are going to want to find them on social media. And yes. The pixel is the way to do that. Um, so it's, you know, unless they're going directly and signing up for your newsletter, which only a fraction of your people will be. Yeah the pixel is the way to go. So we do that. Um, but a lot of it you can do with without even tracking people to your mm -hmm. websites. Um, it's a terrible name. It is a terrible name. It makes no sense. <laughs> yes. but, um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of the gist of the Facebook thing. Keep interacting and then also share the heck out of it, you know, yes. not only on your pages, but to groups mm -hmm. um, and pages that are in the communities that you want to target. And I tell this to everybody, it's going to feel like you're doing it too much and it's not even enough at that point. Like mm -hmm. you, because of how much people are bombarded on their yes. newsfeeds now, like you really have Only to be- Only a little be, bit gets through. Yeah, you've gotta be persistent and just keep blasting that thing out there. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not gonna be that annoying, don't worry. <laughs> now, how do you do your targeting? So for us, um, it's it's pretty simple because we're looking for parents. Yeah. Um, it gets more complicated for other types of events, but I, I definitely target parents and I target- um, And Facebook knows. Yeah, Even if they you haven't do. identified yourself as a parent, they, they know. They do, it's they know so from your creepy, internet activity. Man, but it works. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a way you can target even parents of a certain age range. Mm -hmm. We do that. Um, communities and neighborhoods that I know, um, especially for going to a new community, I, I try to find those neighborhoods that are super trendy or who mm -hmm. might be into something weird like we do. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, you find your little niches, do your research off Facebook and then go on Facebook and target those those specific communities. And that's and another thing to, to point out because your act serves multiple com communities. There are, yeah. of course, children, because mm -hmm. uh, he is a children's magician, but then there's also um, maker. Maker Communities has yes. become an increasing part of what you do. Do you Definitely. actually handle maker events or even um, all ages or adult events differently than you handle kid events? Yeah, so I mean, our our adult events are really targeted towards the magic community. Mm -hmm. um, we don't, the maker stuff is more still family oriented. Yeah. So when I do the magic stuff, that that is very different and I'm targeting something with a really specific interest. So mm -hmm. my numbers, you know, my, my targeting numbers are so small at that point that yeah. it's not so hard, you know? <laughs> it gets, like I said, it gets harder if you have an event that's super broad. And in that sense, you have to get creative and start thinking outside of the box about what what other interests might people have that would also be interested in what I'm doing and find those things, whether they're magazines or TV shows that will pop up as, as uh, options to select as your interests and think about things that are common, you know, common yeah. threads. Uh, now, I know that you said that Facebook events have been your main driver. Mm -hmm. um, what uh, What has worked for you on other platforms? Um, well, I like doing my ads linked to Instagram as well. Mm -hmm. um, I and do. you have a pretty active Instagram community, right? We do, right? we do. And it's funny how it's segmented. Like I have, most of our families tend to be on Facebook, some mm -hmm. of them are Instagram, but there's a ton of magicians that follow Mario on, on Instagram. So any magic related thing, I always, I, I'm heavy with the Instagram stuff. So um, that's your B2B. 
Yes. Platform. It's yeah. interesting. Instagram yeah. is usually not the B2B platform for a lot of people. Carol, <laughs> hello. Yay. Um, Katie is such a smarty. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and I have a link in the comments, Carol, for your friends to check out those classes, which is a good thing to do. We're <laughs> going to mention that again and just ha have it kind of a, it's a scroll at the bottom, I think. If it lets me, it's not letting me. That's okay. <laughs> All right. Um, but go ahead. Um, yeah. And then, I mean, the other thing to remember is that and, you know, the world exists offline. So yes. you do have to do some of your boots on the ground marketing, too. And actually, um, that Facebook event, those people that you've gathered in your Facebook event are a great resource for that. You know, what we've done in some new markets is we'll put out, you know, I'm, I'm going to give away a four pack of tickets for anyone who's willing to post flyers for us. Mm -hmm. You know, post that in your event. Oh, that's awesome. And people jump on it and they're, really? they're people that's who are, fantastic. yeah, they're interested already. They're willing, you know, they're probably willing to tell their friends already and they're going to mm -hmm. be the people who, yeah, I'll, I'll put up a hundred flyers, you that's know, in my amazing. town. And it's like you get them printed and mailed to their home or have it printed and have them pick it up at like a FedEx office yeah. in their location and it's so easy and you don't have to do it. That is you know? so cool. It's totally worth the four tickets you give that away. Is, that is brilliant. That's essentially yeah. in a way like affiliate marketing. Yeah, yeah, totally. Except it's like the the, prede the predecessor of mm -hmm. affiliate marketing. Yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah, I mean, get creative, like do giveaways. Like we do a lot of giveaways through our Facebook events and you're having this whole conversation and it's not clouding your actual Facebook page. Yeah. So it's not bugging all the people who are not in that town or, you know, it's so specific to people who are interested in your event and that tends to get pretty good responses. That is very smart. Yeah. About how far in advance do you start promoting events online? Um, I usually get up a Facebook event as soon as it's booked, which can mm -hmm. be even, you know, five months yeah. in advance. I don't start really getting an ad up until maybe two months in advance mm -hmm. and then switching over that maybe two, three weeks before to the get tickets objective, buy tickets objective. Um, but then, you know, keep in mind that if you want to get your info up online on online calendars or in the oh, press, yeah. you have to start early. Those deadlines are often two, three months before the actual event. And how do you find that local press in markets that you're not in? Google, 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 yeah. you know, Google, Google is your is friend. Your, it is. Google is your friend, you know, find, find the papers that parents are reading. Um, you know, in Rockland, we have like Rockland Parent that's on all the newsstands that's free for people mm -hmm. to pick up. And doctor's offices. Yeah, it's like find that in every community that you're in. And then also the online calendars and blogs and all of the things and Facebook groups and all that stuff that. Yeah. And you can ask, like ask the people in your Facebook event, like where, where do you guys hear about your events? I'd love to post this there. And often they'll be like, oh, I'll post it in my mommy group that I'm a part of. And, oh, I love you that. Know? So use people. It's mm -hmm. um, be vulnerable. Like it's, that is huge. It's important to let people know that this is your first time in a new city. They mm -hmm. want to help you. You know, we just did our first shows in Newport, Rhode Island, and one family was basically responsible for filling an entire one of our shows. <laughs> it was so awesome. Like that is just, incredible. Yeah, like it's you know, it's wow. everything's community oriented, mm -hmm. and they invited all their friends, and that made it so much easier for me. So, oh my goodness, reach out and be honest and ask for help, and and people will respond. That is amazing. Now, <laughs> setting up uh, events to begin with in areas where you're an unknown entity. Like, yes. how does that happen? Yeah. So, um, you know, use really awesome images. It's super mm -hmm. important that you have something very visual. Um, obviously, people respond to faces. They always say that on social media. It's it's a social outlet. They want to see mm -hmm. your face. So um, nice up-close images or really active images yeah. are powerful. You have great photography. <laughs> Thank, you. Mario, Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then when you do your ads, a video is really important. I always do videos for our Facebook ads. Just having that moving image mm -hmm. is, is super powerful. It gets people to stop for a second. And then if it's a good video, they'll stick around and watch it. Yeah. Um, and it gives them an idea of what the heck it is that you're trying to sell them. That's huge. You know, and then get your a really good blurb, like use the best possible descriptor or quote that you have describing that event and use that in your blurb. Be like compelling. if, for example, David Blaine <laughs> called you the greatest children's musician, uh, magician in the world, use the heck out of that. Use that. <laughs> like put it at the top of your website. Yes. <laughs> and in case anyone doesn't know, uh, David Blaine did say that Mario <laughs> is the greatest children's magician in the world. He did. <laughs> and that was together. such an amazing gift. And, you know, mm -hmm. the reason David said that, obviously, you know, I, I do believe that he felt that way, but he also mm -hmm. knows 
that that's something we can then use. Mm -hmm. And he's done great things for our business because he's given us those tools to use, which yeah. is, is so awesome. So yeah, we're so, so grateful use for that. it. So don't be afraid. Yes to use it. Have you done a show in the Ann Arbor area? We have. We did Barbara's Canton. Yeah. Um, Canton, Michigan. We were there last year and we're going to be back April 28th Ooh. at the Canton Village Theater. It's an amazing, awesome venue. It was one of our favorite shows last year. If you go to mariothemagician.com slash shows, you will see our full itinerary and that ticket link is up there. Um, so we love that area. Mario there. lived in Michigan for a little while, and that is actually where he discovered magic. Which you can see in the beautiful documentary, Building Magic. Yes. Which is an award-winning documentary film. <laughs> it about is. About Mario. It is. And starring Mario. Mm -hmm. And you're in there, too. <laughs> I'm in there a little bit. I was sitting there watching it, being like, when do, when do they get to Katie? When do they get oh to Katie? God. And you met through someone named, Lu you met Mario through someone named Luigi. Luigi. Which is the best thing in the world. you make this stuff up. But yeah. <laughs> that is just. Mario and Luigi, yeah. That is magic. <laughs> And it I is. love it. it is. All right. So I have been doing this silly little thing lately called five questions. Oh, awesome. And they are kind of random. <laughs> so please just don't think about them. Okay. <laughs> just like spit out first thing that comes to your mind. And if anyone has specific questions, um, this would be a good time to pop them in there uh, yes. while I am bothering Katie with nonsense. Oh, okay. Tim had mentioned, do the videos have ca oh, captions? Oh, yeah. Do they have um, captions? Yeah. Often if you can get captions up. Even if it's the crappy Facebook, you know, auto caption, mm -hmm. it's worth it because I don't ever watch videos with sound on. Mm -hmm. Most people don't. So if we're busy, we're doing stuff yeah, while we're scrolling. That always helps. Pretending to listening, listen to our spouses mm -hmm. or children <laughs> or whatever. Exactly. All right. So five questions. Question one. Rabbits or doves? Doves, obviously. <laughs> they have a dove mozzarella, mozzarella. the dove. <laughs> <laughs> Question two. Tricks or illusions? tricks i i'm not cool <laughs> enough to say illusions man we're, we're you know diy tricks similarly the third one won't make sense unless you've watched arrested development have you oh yes okay joe bluth or tony wonder <laughs> joe all the way <laughs> you know he was actually so mario appeared on sesame street and mm -hmm. as i was researching had any other magicians ever appeared job in character yes! as a magician appeared on Sesame Street. He was amazing. Awesome. Okay. Not as amazing as Mario, <laughs> no, who actually course. did a maker bit with the children did, on yeah. Sesame Street, which yeah. was fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Number four, Mario or Luigi? Mario. Duh. <laughs> okay. This one's harder. Number five, private party or theater show? Lately, theater shows for a long time, private parties. Mm -hmm. We love the theater shows. It's our thing right now. Um, but I will say that every single amazing opportunity that we have ever gotten has come from a birthday party that's amazing yeah so don't, oh, i love that don't think you're too good for the birthdays you might be you know they're showing up on sesame street the next week because of it yeah so, you know you guys did someone really famous's birthday party, grandchildren's birthday party we did um well robert de niro yes. was the one where that's where mario met David, David actually oh my goodness. hired Mario to come and perform for his good friend, David, uh, Robert De Niro and his kids and family. So um, cool. Yeah. Mario's done a lot of awesome, crazy celebrity stuff, <laughs> but it's never, you know, we, but it's just the families that are like us that we really relate to and love yeah. more than anything. And those are the people that root for us and get their friends to buy tickets. And those are like the super fans that we love more than anybody. And Murray the Muppet. And Murray. And Ovejita. Yes. <laughs> Ovejita. <laughs> Ovejita. <laughs> oh, Barbara did photos when Mario did a show for Rivertown Film. Yes. Awesome. And I actually interviewed Mario at a yeah. show for Rivertown yeah, Film. Yeah, that was probably the same one. All right. I think we're, we're good now. So I'm going to uh, remind people where they can find your course. Uh, this is Katie's course where you can um, learn from Katie about how to market. If you are a performer or a creative of any sort, you don't have to be a magician. Right. It, right. Is, it is about how to, how to promote when you are the product, basically, yes. you know, when your work is what's what's going on. Definitely. And I also want to let people know about something I've got going on, too, um, because I am actually working on something right after this. Um, oh, are you doing a robot hacking class in Chicago? We're still working That's on. That's cool. Hopefully setting up a date for that. I know our, our itinerary there is pretty packed, but we're working on it, Carol. I will definitely let you know if that happens. Love it. <laughs> and in the meantime, I'm going to, I'm going to promote my thing, which yes. is how to social, which is something that I'm doing something for right after this. Um, at, which is a collaboration with my dear friend, Doreen Moore and Van Damme. And we are going to be teaching about content strategy. 
Awesome. Because content strategy, I mean, that's kind of what we talked that's about. Everything. In, it's everything. In 2017. Um, yeah. What does content strategy mean to you? To me, it's like, what the heck are you putting out there? And mm -hmm. then, like, don't just shout out into the realm of Facebook, but putting content that people are going to relate to and want to interact with. And it's so, this is everything with yep. social media marketing. So I have to say, Christine is like a huge source of inspiration for me. <laughs> and you guys would be so, so happy if you, you know, Yay. followed anything that she does, take her <laughs> courses. Follow everything. Follow her page right now. <laughs> um, yeah. One. So for those who don't know how to social, I put the link in the thing. Um, we're doing a masterclass. Um, not we, but me, me and Doreen, <laughs> we're doing a masterclass on the evening of February 24th online on Zoom webinar. But um, for a little taste and a little intro to the sorts of things we'll be discussing, I'm doing a webinar at 1 p.m. So right now it is 12.21, so in 40 <laughs> minutes. But it's not here on Facebook Live. It's a webinar that you have to register for. So go to that link, How to Social 2019, and uh, you will see it. And hopefully I'll see people online later. And uh, this has been Katie Marchese of Mario the Magician, Mario the Maker Magician. You should absolutely check them out. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, if they're coming to your city, uh, Put up some flyers. Tell your friends. Help us, post in your mommy group. Uh, <laughs> tell them where to eat. Yes. And uh, and I am yes. Katie and Mario have the coolest <laughs> magic family ever. That is true. Thank and they you. have. Oh, and you have a YouTube. Show. We do, yeah. We haven't put an episode up lately, but we mm -hmm. will. I'm busy soon. living. We will. We will um, find Mar. Just Google Mario the Magician on YouTube, and you'll mm -hmm. find us. Uh, My Magic Family is the name of the little segments where we put our family in there and, and talk about our crazy travels. So. Oh God, they're so <laughs> cute. All right, so I am Christine Gritman. I do this every Friday at twelve noon Eastern Time. Uh, next week, I am going to be talking to the fabulous. Ms. Amanda Robinson, AKA the digital gal. And I have just put that link up on, um, on Facebook and on BeLive. So hopefully I will see some people joining me next Friday at noon and I'll put the link in the comments. Thanks everyone. And especially Katie. Bye. Thank you. Bye.